Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of the show. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we have with us Roxanne Fulkerson with Rocks Bars. Welcome to the show, Roxanne. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks thanks so much for having me. You're welcome, and we just wanted to learn a little bit more about your company, and um, I know that you've got a unique product and something fun, and I'm sure with any product like that, um, you have a story behind it. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been in, in businesses, and then what got you started into uh, the the business you're in with the Rocks Bars. Sure. Well, my husband and I are very entrepreneurial. We've always had our own business probably since, gosh, at least 85 Um, We've had several different types of businesses from jewelry to construction to uh, what we're doing now, catering. My background is entertainment in all phases from um, producing shows, writing, performing, singing, all that. So we're pretty eclectic and both artists, um, but definitely entrepreneurs. So in regards to rock spars, about two and a half years ago, I was doing a triathlon, a little mini triathlon. And previous to that, probably about a year and a half before I'd been thinking about it. And really, I just wanted to do it to prove to myself that I could. So as I was thinking about it and kind of starting to learn how to train, everything on my own, I didn't, which is kind of how I do things, probably like a lot of entrepreneurs, you jump into something and then you figure out how to do it later. So I started make, I started realizing that, um, as I was training, I, I needed some really good fuel in the, in the form of bars because that was convenient. And this whole thing about um, eating while you're training, especially because you had to do usually train a couple times a day, uh, was different for me. And so for years and years, I had looked for a good bar, and they just always made me sick, bar as far as nutrition bar. It always just never settled well or never done you know, what they said they were going to do. Mm-hmm. And so I have a bit of a, I'm kind of a food snob, I always say, and being Greek, food is a big deal. Food is a big deal in our house. It always has been. I like to make things delicious. From the time I was about 12, I started studying food on my own. And I, I don't mean just like, oh, I, here's, you know, some recipe you see in a magazine and make it. I did do that. But I mean, I remember saving up my babysitting money when I was 14 to buy, um, Julia Childs, the you know the French cook, uh, the first one I can't remember what it's called, um, but anyway, her first book. So I always did that. Was very self-taught with food and always very interested from the nutrition aspect in trying to take a recipe and make it healthier or healthy. Mm-hmm. So on my quest for bars, there just weren't any. Um, I'm gluten-free and have been for ten years. Couldn't find a decent gluten-free bar that was also dairy-free and that didn't use a lot of refined sugar, even cane syrup. I didn't want that. I wanted all natural sources. I didn't want sugar alcohols, which like the xylitol and the erythritol and things that everything just was, you know, that can upset your stomach. And so many of those bars, they, they bulk them up with cellulose and dextrose, which humans can't digest cellulose. You know, there's, this has really been an education quest for me as well for people. Anyhow, so I came up with these bars, and as I continued to refine them, once again, with the Greek thing, you know, here, eat, honey, eat, you know, yeah. giving them to my friends and family, and everybody's trying them and, and loving the bars. And so I was refining them more and more specifically for athletes, because you can't have a bar that's not going to hold together well, or, you know, just all kinds of things as you're throwing them in your backpack or whatever you're doing. So um, I had people just asking for them for me to sell them well one of my sons was a coach at texas tech at the time and i had gone out to visit him he was a track coach and he'd been giving the bars to the coaches so he uh asked me to bring as many bars as i could and at this point i'm not even in a commercial kitchen i'm just doing it at home thinking seriously about you know making the bars so (laughs) <laughs> that's another story if you'd care to hear it, but we, we ended up by the skin of our teeth getting all these 10 dozen done, and um, the, the coaches wanted the bars, and we got into a few other uh, university athletic programs, and all of a sudden I realized, wow, this is viable. And I was working two jobs at the time and was uh, not looking for a third job, so yeah. decided to take the leap and um, leave one of the jobs and go ahead and start 
Brox bars, um, not just because, you know, I wanted a product for me, which is really how it started that was, was healthy and I can talk about all the specifics of it, but really there just wasn't a product like this. And the, the outcry from, again, friends, family, and people continually that were tasting it. And how long ago was that that you started the bars? Well, really, it's been about four years. Um, as um, as a business, the beginning of last year, however, I'm, uh, but we incorporated the middle of last year. So we've, we've really been doing yeah. it about four years. The reason that I was asking is it just seems from the outside looking in, and, and you know, you've done all the industry research, but, you know, you watch shows like Shark Tank, and, and it seems like certainly I've, I've seen someone come in with that, and, and you hear the comment of, um, well, that's such a crowded market. And I'm thinking, wow, bars and for endurance and fitness athletes and things like that, only four years ago, you researched and found that there was nothing on the market like, now there's a lot of bars, but nothing like what you offered. Um, what specifically, if you were to pin it down to one or two things, if some if an athlete was looking at a bar, what is going to set your bar um, apart from everyone else? There's several things. Now, gluten-free and dairy-free, there are other products like that. Um, Soy-free, you're starting to lose people because so many people, they want to up their protein, so they use the soy protein uh, isolate chips um, or protein powder. I didn't want soy. didn't want my protein to come from that. Why, uh, course, why not soy? Is there an issue with that with athletes? Not particularly athletes, but, you know, like I said, initially I was making this for myself. I don't digest okay. that well, and a lot of people don't. And okay. um, so also, of course, non-GMO, um, I wanted it to be refined, free from refined sugar. Our source of sugar is coconut sugar, and we use a little honey. Both of those are very low on the glycemic index. Now, many, many of the bars out there for athletes and endurance sports use their base of date paste, which date paste is 103 on the glycemic index. And uh, coconut sugar is 35, to give you an example. Honey is 50. And what is honey? Honey is about 55. Okay. 55, so a, a good bit less than the um, the paste. I'm sorry? It, that's a good bit under what the paste is on the glycemic oh, index. Oh, definitely. And when you look at, not a lot of people are familiar with the glycemic index, but, you know, we're we're trying to avoid oxidation and uh, inflammation and things, which they found is such a link to disease and cancer. And um, once again, it was really born out of the fact that I didn't want the refined sugars. And yeah. then the other thing is sugar alcohols. Now, so many bars, um, specifically for athletes, well, what they do is they want to get the sugars really low, like two or three grams. And, <clears throat> and so what they do is they use erythritol or, or xylitol, which are sugar alcohols. And since the way they derive those, it, you're going to have either a liquid or a powder, and it's, um, it's a synthesized version and then you need something to bulk it up. So that's when they bring in the, I don't mean to get science geek on you, but that's when they, they use polysaccharides and maltodextrin, a lot of things like that, um, dextrose cellulose, which is plant fiber. They bulk them up with that in order to put them into the bar. And it's very, it's slow digesting. And, it's, and in, in fact, really, humans can't digest cellulose. So what it does is make you feel full, and then it's got the artificial sugar. So I just didn't want that. Again, it just sure. made me not feel good. And plus, probably one of the biggest things just as important is the taste. Now, it's hard to talk about that on a radio show, which um, you're going to give me, I hope, your address, and I'll send you some bars, Mike, and then you can decide yourself. Yay. Because when you talk about taste, uh, people are always, oh, yeah, right, everyone's saying Right, right, it's going to be chalky, it's going to be something. Oily, chalky, whatever. And, you know, I have a bit of a food background. I used to cater and do events. And, um, and, and admittedly, I'm a food snob. It has to taste good. I wanted this to taste like a chewy cookie almost. If I'm going to bother eating this, and uh, I didn't want it super sweet, which that's one thing people say about my bars is it's perfect. It's not too sweet. Mm -hmm. And so we've got, like I said, the two, the coconut sugar, the honey. Several of the bars use different types of dried fruit. We've got a cranberry pecan flavor and a blueberry almond with dried blueberries and a cocoa cherry with the um, uh, dark cocoa powder and dried cherries and a couple others. So, so anyway, that's where the sweetness comes from. I just wanted it to be natural and natural sources. 
And every ingredient is there in there is fully researched on for specifically for endurance. For example, pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds, the kernel of the pumpkin seed, very high in protein, very high in calcium and magnesium, and that's what you need for muscular repair during endurance. Do you get um, do you get into uh, adding in like amino acids or other things like that um, with within the bar, or do you let some of those other ingredients cover that? I do not do anything like that. We just It's just real food. And, of course, the amino acids are going to be in some of those um, sure. the food, and that's for, you know why they were chosen. But we get our protein specifically from egg whites and from the nut butters and the, the seeds and nuts. So that's – I just wanted and to why be, is And why is someone going to take the – to use the bar in their training? Sure, it tastes good, and it's got all of those – good ingredients, but what are they going to get out of it? What's the point? So when you combine the healthy fats we use from the, of course, from the nut butters and the nuts themselves and with the type of protein we use and the carbs which come from as far as the grains from the um, gluten-free oats and the crispy rice, that provides a very, you know, a lot of times you'd look for your protein carb ratio. Uh, we have one that's two to one. Our others are about two and a half to one. So it's a very good carb to protein ratio. It, it's a sustained energy because of that, because of the formulation. And also, okay. specifically, the coconut sugar is a complex sugar. So it doesn't cause you to spike. You're not going to have a spike and then a crash. Uh, the, mm-hmm. way they, the, way they, um, the way coconut sugar is made is... Basically, it's from the coconut flour. They take the nectar, and they just let the liquid evaporate. So you have the granulated um, sweetness from the flour. And that actually has a lot of complex minerals and B vitamins in it, as opposed to, you know, refined sugar. Uh, You know, we all know they take the vitamins out. And so, and they, in fact, rob your body of B vitamins. So that, that, that really, to me says it all the whole story because glycemic index is kind of techy geeky but you relate that to spikes in in blood sugar and in insulin things like that and you just don't want your body doing that when you're it at all i'm sure but especially within training and things and so helping the body recover and repair um the taste you got to get it down your throat so let's make it taste really good so that's wonderful and um gluten-free and processed sugars and all of these things it just to me i would just say the word pure uh is is coming to mind oh definitely and this um has ended up not at all being only for athletes I have so many clients that this is what they eat for breakfast because they're not breakfast oh, people. So they have their green tea or their green drink or whatever. With this, in fact, we have something I can tell you about um, called the Rocks Bar Challenge, which is actually a dietary program. It's, I call it Jump Start to a Healthy Lifestyle. It's a six-day program that integrates two of the bars a day for the six days. And people have been having just incredible uh, results as far as getting them to he- eat healthy again and weight loss. It's been amazing. But Neat. I have a lot of diabetic clients, a lot of people that just don't want the junk, and again, yeah. that it works well for them, not just for on-the-go and snacks, but, um, but for breakfast. I have one client that all he's done in the last three months is uh, exchange this bar, Rocks Bars, for a bar that he was eating, which I won't say what it was, and he's lost nine pounds. So hmm. you're giving your body healthy, good nutrition that, that yeah. tastes good, it's assimilated well, and um, and it's just that's what we really should be doing. I just I like to tell people, you know, if you can do the right thing, eighty eighty five percent of the time, you're doing great. I mean, we're all gonna have the piece of I can't eat cake, but I mean, you're all gonna have the dessert or the wine or something now and then. But yeah, some you know, splurge. that's life. Yeah, that's you gotta live a little. But but if you if you can go back to your good habits, then that's important. And and I think also convenience is a big factor that the bar would play into that because I think sometimes you see some of these things that go, hey, here's this recipe for whatever, and it's all these obscure ingredients. You know, you have to get this, and then you got to go to eight Whole Food stores and just to get the recipe for this one thing. And to me, people. It, that's hard to recommend that people do all of these things just to make this one, whatever it is, you know, protein shake or whatever. Well, if you have something that's 
everything your bar is, and it's convenient. You put that in your backpack, your purse, your pocket, and now you don't have to worry about going out and mixing and doing all this stuff. To me, that's a big piece of it. Exactly. And we like to also say that this is really a meal replacement. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say, when you look at the amount of calories and, and protein and everything, it's, it's perfect for that. That's why I think so many people eat it for breakfast. But um, it works really, really well for that. And again, if you get stuck at your desk or work or whatever, do you want to go eat some fast food thing that it's not going to be that good for you and it's going to cost you five or six bucks anyway? And, or, you know, it's better to to keep the healthy nutrition with you. You know, also, I think part of the reason you were talking about um, the glut of nutrition bars on the market, and I think that's a big reason why is is convenience. But this is a $7.5 billion industry. 56% of that is cereal bars like you know, the Nature Valley and, you know what I mean, like granola kind of cereal bars. Things like that, yeah. Yeah. And they're not meant to be performance-type bars. Exactly, exactly, yeah. or kind of meal replacement bars. 44% mm-hmm. is, um, is, is more than nutrition bar, performance bar. However, uh, I mean, a large sector of that 44% is going to be some of the really general mills, even some of the larger ones that, are, that own some of these other companies, Cliff Bars. Um, and so there still is actually a pretty big market share. It's amazing how we're such a niche society, mm-hmm. too, you know, that yeah. you want to have it have it your way. So, um, so I'm just happy to be able to provide this because there, you know, I'm very passionate about nutrition, and I, I want to ha- provide this for others as well. Awesome. You said something at the very beginning of our conversation that I thought was really profound. Uh, something to the effect of, yeah, as an entrepreneur, I like to just jump in and I learn it as we go. And it reminded me of um, a, a saying from one of my favorite motivational speakers, Les Brown, who says, you know, jump and grow your wings on the way down. Meaning, don't get paralysis by analysis and, and have to have everything figured out and have it perfect before you launch or do or go. Just start. Just get something started and learn and tweak and pivot or all of these things um, in business. And that makes me wonder, when you got going, what was the biggest challenge or what were some of the challenges that you faced when getting uh, the business off the ground? Well, Mike, it's interesting you say that because I've always been pretty much a fire starter like that and, and, you know, learn as you go. When we decided to do this, I thought, well, certainly you can, the cottage food industry uh, have some licenses to do things at home. But I knew from the get-go, if this was not scalable, if I didn't have a manufacturing plant, why am I going to do it? I don't want to just sit in the kitchen and make bars. There's too many other interests I have. There's too many other things I feel I'm called to do. So I went, I rented a commercial kitchen, and uh, I didn't know anything about running a commercial kitchen. You know, <laughs> they, I mean, I had been in, in catering, but I had been ca- in catering for private institutions. So there was some things that I had all my personal permits as far as my licensing, but I didn't really need for a facility. So, um, so I was learning as I was going along and they say, oh, yeah, we need your XYZ permit. And I say, oh, yeah, that's in the works. And then, you know, you go home and figure out what the is in XYZ. Figure out what the works are that you need to get it in. <laughs> <laughs> so then you do what you need to do. But I think one of my... Some of the biggest challenges have been, um, although we've had a lot of businesses, this has been a little bit different, the type of startup process for this business. And um, organizing all the different sectors from the get-go, you know, wearing all the hats, keeping all the balls in the air, trying not to drop any, trying to make sustainable systems that are transferable and teach those as you go when, when you can bring some people in to help you. And a big one, I was looking at your your 12 principles of, um, that you have on your site. And there's some great things there. Um, and one of them are talking about fear. I think fear can, can really cripple you. And with yeah. me particularly, it was, it was that analysis paralysis was starting to come in because I, I like the analysis. However, um, that, you know, you can't have everything perfect before you go or you'll never go. And, um, yeah. so, uh, and, and, my life particularly, I mean, I would have to, I, because the way I live my life and my beliefs, I, God has been in everything with this, and I'd have to say, okay, what do I do next? What do I, how do I go about this? Because I knew in the long run we were going to do manufacturing, and I knew um, we had started with a couple, a couple places right away, and one didn't work out, and so that was something I can tell you about more if you're interested in that. But 
I, I began with the end in mind, hopefully, in that mm. I knew this was, could be a large-scale project, product, but, but I think that the, just the fear and getting bogged down from systems and really not having probably as good a systems in place when we started uh, that I would have liked, but again, you don't know what you don't know. And this yeah, is a that's a good point. And you say, begin with the end in mind. That's a great Stephen Covey quote. And um, I was just doing a, a presentation at, with some businesses yesterday and used the uh, Michael Gerber quote from E-Myth about taking time to work on your business, not in your business. Well, mm-hmm. after you get a little bit into getting your business off the ground, then you have that luxury of going, okay, Friday afternoons or Thursday mornings or whatever little block of time I'm going to take and then do that analysis and analytical and work on the business, not in the business, because then you can kind of get that handled. Um, and then, so, so I mean, that, those really resonate with me, and I really feel that that's very, very important what you said. The other thing is you mentioned fear and, and doing things according to God's way, and the way I kind of introduce or, or structure my business is, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ masquerading as a, you know, marketing consultant or masquerade. And, and you kind of kind of go, what's your focus? You know, if you're out to make a trillion gillion dollars, well, hmm, maybe that's one way to, to do business. But if you're looking at making an impact in the world, and when you think about two words that start with F, fear and faith, and I've heard of this, the, the little analogy or the statement that says, um, fear ends where faith begins, or faith ends where fear begins. So it's like when you start being fearful, maybe that's like you clutching back your business and going, I got this God, but oh, I'm afraid, but I got this God, but I'm, a- I'm afraid. And maybe it needs to be a little bit more, you know, open-fisted, not closed-fisted and going, God, it's all you. Show me what the best way, help me to be uh, uh, wise, give me wisdom, but you know, what, what's some of the, 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 the ways that you approach your business given, you know, fear and faith? Well, definitely from the get go, always God's a hundred percent. Um, I think you're absolutely right with, with the fear and faith. It's kind of in each hand, which one are you going to lean toward? And, um, you know, the adage about when you're squeezed, what comes out, um, yeah. being in new situations and things, if you really care about what kind of a person you are, because if I had to sum up life, I would say, you know, two things matter. God matters and people matter. And I believe mm-hmm. uh, one of the highest callings is to help people know how much God loves them and how important yeah. they are. And that's really pretty much everything. So in this process, as I would hit things, even things like with the manufacturing, you know, there's so many things you get knocked down. You get knocked down, you get up again, you get knocked down, you get up again. God helps you get back up. Um, we ran into things because um, we had to actually design and build some equipment for the manufacturing yeah. company uh, because my process is very different. And so, you know, you think you come to a stop point. Well, this isn't going to work. Okay, we get around this one. Now you hit another one. Well, this isn't going to work. And, you know, it fears just waiting to jump all over you. Yeah. And so... Um, you say, you know, if you feel like you're where God wants you to be and you're doing what he wants you to do, then you do it with excellence to the best of your ability. You lay yeah. the foundation and pray that he brings the increase because it's definitely going to come from him. So that's and, the way I look at things. That, I love it. And, and maybe it's not even, you know, like the term success. Success could mean different things to different people, but praying for the increase could be, yeah, increase in you know, yes, revenues and all that, but it also could be increase in just knowledge of how to get stuff done or knowledge of where to go to help me to get the uh, connections or the strategic alliances or the support to get things done. Because I'll tell you that I've heard over and over, and for me, I've experienced too in my life, you'll be out just doing something, you know, fishing or riding your bike, and all of a sudden this, you know, I've been riding my bike before down a bike path and fumbling for my phone to go, ooh, I just had this idea and I've got to call myself or text myself to get this down because... Because sometimes when you're out of the mode of business, that's when you can think, even from a, just a physical standpoint, you can think clearly. But also, I think you need to be open for that, and God will go, you know what, why don't you call up so-and-so? Or, or you just feel prompted to call someone, or you know, in the mode of encouraging someone that's having a bad day, maybe a, a, a flash of brilliance comes your way. So I, I just think that we just need to be open. And, and one of my favorite books is The Prayer of Jabez. Are you familiar with that book? Yes. Uh huh. That was a while ago. Yeah. It was quite a while. Bruce Wilkinson. 
Yeah, yeah, experience. Yeah, you're exactly right. And one of the things was, you know, like Jabez moments, meaning, you know, what are some of these moments in life that we just get busy and busy and busy and our head is down and our nose is to the grindstone and we miss an opportunity even just to speak a word of encouragement to someone or, or to help someone or, or something like that. And I think that if we can approach business in that respect, I think then that helps solidify a lot of our overall purpose in business and life. So is there a way or two, or is there a philosophy or how you uh, use rocks bars to kind of help out mankind or, or God's kingdom or, or something bigger than selling a bar? Well, a couple things. I would agree with you um, on much of what you said. And I believe, you know, it is about the journey. (laughs) And uh, again, what I'd said previously, it's about, people and letting people know how important they are specifically to God. And I think the way that we treat people is the biggest indicator of that. Um, as far as success, I look at the person I am now and the one I was when I started. And I think of all the situations that I could just get so intense and hyper about because I am, you know, definitely the type A personality. And, um, and, you know, of course, we work 10 times harder than... I'm just kidding. <laughs> we can get a lot done, type papers about it. Yeah. But, you know, you, you can do that. I'm going to do everything myself. And not that you necessarily think, you know, you're the savior of everything. But sometimes it can come out that way. And yeah. having to let go and having to, in some, in some instances, I don't know if be humbled is the right way to say it, but just to say, you know, I really do need help over here to yeah. see the way that I have changed, that I'm not half as hyper as I used to be. And I could have my family and staff and friends attest to that, that because yeah. you're, you're going to hit, you're going to hit challenges continually. I have a friend that's uh, done very, very well in business. And um, he said to me when we were discussing some things and I was picking his brain, he said, you know, Roxanne, I make millions of dollars often and I lose millions of dollars and mm-hmm. I don't get too excited either way. Either and, way. Yeah, um, neat. And this is, this is a person of faith, and, um, you know, I appreciated that, and I think about it, um, because really, who you are is going to speak so much louder than words and the way you treat people. But the thing, as far as, uh, you know, a philosophy or whatever, there's um, a scripture, and I'm sorry, I don't know exactly where it is, but it says that God's mercies are new every morning. Um, yep. And so I put it a little bit differently, and I say it's a new day. And I remember that it's a new day, whether we had a mess up or things didn't go like we thought or a delay and delays are what kills me. Oh, I don't know yeah. about you. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Yeah, because so I want it now. <laughs> right, yep. right. And so, you know, continually I remind myself that there is a bigger, bigger picture that I do not see. There's things that need to be lined up with um, people, relationships, all kinds of opportunities that I don't see. And if I... Just remember, it's a new day. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do my absolute best. And um, sometimes if you're perfectionistic, as I tend to be, it can be difficult because you think, did I really do my best? <laughs> you know, did I really work you know, hard and enough? What you just said there reminds me of a story of an example story um, about, you know, uh, I want to do it all and I want to help all these people and I want to do, you know, everything that I can do. Well, um, the story goes that uh, Grandpa and his grandson were walking down the beach and they were, you know, finding, I don't know, sand dollars or something and or starfish and they were washing up and he would throw one back in and he goes, hey, this is a living creature. Here you go. I'm throwing this back in the ocean. I saved this one. And the grandson goes, well, Grandpa, you can't save all of them. You know, what difference does it make? And he picks one up and he throws it in and he says it makes a difference to this one and then it makes a difference to this one. So, yeah, we can't do it all, save the world, you know, make make uh, the whole, uh, everything we want to get done happen on our own at all times in the moment. But what's in front of us, what's on our plate today and tomorrow and what we can actually impact, that's what we can impact. And I think that that, that kind of takes some pressure off of us too, because it's like, hey, well, I can get up and I've got my day planned here and I can make an impact here, or I can um, have a, a, an encouraging word to one of my employees or one of my vendors here. And and if that's all I accomplished all day long, um, wonderful. Or, or so I think that that enormity sometimes can be boating and, and overwhelming for us if we feel like I feel like I want to do everything, but I know I can't. Exactly, exactly. And you know, when you were talking about um, why, what, what are some of the successes? I really do look at providing healthy food for people because you know, if we're here to 
live for God, to live for others. And, you know, you don't want to be, I don't want to be in bed the last 20 years of my life. I've got mm-hmm. longevity in my family on both sides. And I work very hard at my health. I always have. Um, I was just reading an article this morning in the paper. I know that sounds archaic, but we actually do get the paper. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, really. And it was talking about, um, you know, if we could just eliminate junk food and vilifying junk food. Well, you know, people that have, that are, struggle with weight issues or they don't eat properly or have, you know, illness because of that, you know, just eliminating junk food isn't going to change that necessarily. You have, it has to be a lifestyle choice. Yeah. So you can't vilify one thing. But if I can provide, as far as success, I would feel successful. I do feel successful when I can offer something, especially when kids, when we're at a farmer's market or a store yeah. or whatever, and we're selling, and kids come up and do samples, and they look at their mom or, or dad, and they nod like because they like the taste so much. Yep. And the parents are looking at the ingredients going, this is fabulous. It's like right. that makes me feel like a success because I I really yeah. want to help people be healthy. Yep. Well, because guess what? We're, you know, it's the temple of the Lord. And if we can help mm-hmm. maintain that temple and it's not a product that's tearing the temple down, um, that's a good thing. And so in that element, in that aspect, that's a, a way that you can view uh, your business making an impact in the world too. I think that's an excellent point. Definitely. Hey, so we've heard I mean, I, I, I love the concept. I definitely want to get me some. And uh, how can other people learn more? What is the best uh, uh, way to learn more about your bars? What's your website address? And we will wrap up with how people can learn more about your bars. Our website is roxbars.com, R-O-X-B-A-R-S.com. And you can read all about how we got started and everything that's in our bars and our flavors and how we can get it to you. And we've got a great subscription program. If Ooh, it's nice. very convenient. It just goes out every month. So, yeah, that's where you can get all the Smart. info. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was great getting to know you and your great bars. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.